This is a tier list ranking agents based on how good they are in post plan scenarios. Now, there are some ground rules and assumptions we need to set in order to do this tier list. So if you don't want to hear those, skip to this point in the video. So I have my notebook here full of ground rules. And the first one we will have to set is that we are going to assume it's a fair post plan. It's not a 5v1 and we're not looking at the one. It's not a 1v5 and we're not looking at the five. This is assuming that they have about even numbers on both sides and that it's not super like you're not super rushed trying to defuse a bomb or trying to stop the diffuser and all four of his teammates. The second ground rule we have to set is that we are not looking at the best way to play an agent and we are not looking at the worst way to play an agent. We're looking at about average about how most players would play because this tier list has to take into consideration Radiant players and Iron players. It's not only the top level or the bottom level. We have to look at everybody and how every rank would use or play an agent. In this hypothetical post-plant scenario, we're going to go by these rules. The post-plant, the agent we are looking at, the post-planter, is playing time. The post-planter is holding angles more passively. They're, they're trying to let the retakers come to them and they're playing passive and quiet, okay? They're playing for their abilities. They're not playing to simply peek and get lucky and get frags. Okay, another thing we have to look at is just because a play works or could work doesn't mean it's good. Just because an omen flashes all five retakers that are standing in a line, TPs behind them, they all turn around and whiff 30 phantom bolts and he gets an op, no scope, quintuple, headshot, collat, doesn't mean we're going to count that as an S tier play and that Omen should go in S tier because he could hypothetically do that. We are going to look at the agent's kit as a whole and assume that they have all of their abilities for the post plan. We're not going to, because if we nitpick and only choose certain abilities, it's unfair. So we're going to assume all agents have all abilities and we are going to rate their kit in a post plan scenario relative to their kit in any other scenario, okay? So just because an agent is really good entering a site doesn't mean they're necessarily really good post plan. Just because an agent is overpowered, like say Chamber, doesn't mean he's automatically gonna get S tier. This needs to be based relatively on how good they are normally. So if we had an agent that had a million health, did 200 damage per shot and had an Odin that did that, or a Judge, doesn't mean they're gonna get S tier. It's relative on how good they are normally. So for example, Breach, our first agent here, his abilities are very concentrated. They're not like a, a, a Fade where or a Sov where you can throw a dart somewhere and it scans everything in line of sight. Fades, or Breach's abilities are very line of sight. They're very direct. You have to be aiming at the person with his stun and with his aftershock. With his flash and his ult, those two are very wide, but simply based on he's an initiator and two of his regular abilities that are not ultimates are line of sight and you have to aim directly at a person basically. Make him not so good when entering compared to when, uh, when post planting. So I think Breach, because in a post plant, you know exactly where the bomb is, where the spike is, and you know where to aim your stun and your aftershock. Breach is slightly better than entrying in a post plant. And I'm kind of stuck between B and A tier for this one. I'm looking at my notes. And simply because he is initiator, I'm gonna to have to put in B tier because initiators are made to enter site and are made to set up teammates. And so in a post plant, he's gonna go in B tier. Next up we have Brimmy. So Brimmy with the Stimmy. So Brimstone has two very good abilities in post plant, his Molly and his ult. Those two are, when you're playing against a good Brim who has lineups and who has his ult and knows how to play a post plant, this is very annoying to play against. But because of how easy his ult is to use and his molly is to hit, even if you're, you're a silver or something, not hitting on silvers, but even if you're a low rank, it's pretty easy to hit his molly if you're looking at the bomb or have a fairly easy, you know, bounce to bomb sightline. Any rank 
is good with Brim in a post mine scenario. His stim is obviously meant for entering site, but um, you can still put your stim down and you can jiggle faster, you can jump spot faster, or you can run across an angle faster if the enemy isn't expecting you to just simply run across. His smokes can cut off entry points to site, and as much as they are very much so probably going to get used to enter site, we still have to assume he has all his abilities. And so, playing a post plant as Brim is pretty good. And so Brimstone, I think, I'm going to put him in the same tier as his big burly male friend Breach who I often confuse. Next up we have Cypher. Now most of you can assume Sentinels are going to be pretty high up in this tier list. And I think maybe to some surprise, I'm actually going to put Cypher in S tier. Some of you may hate me for this, but once again, assuming he has all his abilities, he has two trip wires. You can either put them on the bomb or a common point that is used to retake. Like you can put it in U-Haul or you can put it somewhere on elbow or somewhere and it can be very useful. His cages, you can put them next to a trip or something. You, like, you can have a camera looking at bomb, you can put a cage under it, put the cage, check the can, ping the guy, now he's dead. The camera stays invisible throughout the round until you use it. So that's a very, very useful um, utility for post plant. Sorry, my hair gives you any more way. And his alt, once again, very useful on post plant. You know where everybody is, no one's flanking you. So simply because he has trip wires and a cam, I think those two simply put him in A or S and then his cage is an alt and how he plays, because he usually plays more passive, can be very helpful. Now, he doesn't have any damaging abilities like Brim or Breach, but simply because you can get a, get a, a ping and a trip wire hit on an enemy, is very helpful because if they smoke you off, you're playing C long or something, you got a trip on bomb, Super easy to, to spray through the smoke if you're good. Omen, because of the mind games he can play with his ult and his, uh, I think his shrouded step, his teleport, it puts a lot of pressure on the retakers to clear everything. And you probably have to clear things twice or three times if Omen teleports somewhere or does a fake TP. Omen's teleport only makes the noise from where he departed from. It doesn't say where he went to. So when he teleports, you don't know if he faked, you don't know if he went triple, you don't know if he went, you know, back to showers, you don't know where he went. And so that alone can cause so much confusion in the enemy team that I'm gonna have to put him in A tier. Now a bad omen sucks. But once again, you have to assume it's, the, it's an, an average player. They're not making a flash TP behind a bomb, spray three people down. They can just go from place to place and confuse people. It's very good to have one. Phoenix. Phoenix is a uh, fairly bad right now. This is being recorded before his buff, I believe, a few days before his buff. I don't think it's out yet. So I'm basing it based on that. This is all based on the current patch. I believe it's 5.0. I don't think 5.01 has come out yet. So Phoenix, I assume most of you can guess is fairly low but simply because he has his flashes and a molly and his alt is pretty good if you still have it post post plant it's pretty good it's not too bad but compared to his entering skills i'm going to put him c he's not terrible on an alt or he's not terrible on a post plant he's better than some other duelists which you'll see in a second but I think he's not as bad as people think he is. Even right now in the meta, people s say if you get to lock, or even if you lock Phoenix or trolling, report him right now, man. Get him out of this game. Re remake. But C tier isn't too bad for guys considered the worst agent in the game right now. Next, Sage. Sentinel, you can assume. Pretty high up. Now, Sage, because of her wall, it's pretty good. You can wall off the bomb, you can wall off a whole point, 
and they either have to break it, giving you an audio cue, or teleport, or jump, or somehow get up top. Most of the times you can't jump on top, so you're gonna have to use an ability, which will give you an audio cue as well. And so you know you can disregard one portion of the map until an audio cue comes up, which allows you to have a more focused point which you're watching towards the other side of the bomb site. And or slows, slow down time. If you slow down the, if you put a slow on the spike and the enemies move in it, you can hear it so you know they're off the bomb, even if they're, I believe even if they're shift locking. I'm not too sure, I don't play Sage too much. I don't hear Sage. I don't see Sage a lot in my games. But that is what I believe. Res, very important. Can If you, if you res an agent who has an ult, amazing, even just, you can even res an AFK player and it can change the outcome of round. That's how good Sage's res is. Even if you res a guy and they've gone to get some chips because they died two seconds into the round and they sit there, the enemy could still mess up because they believe now instead of a 1v1, it's a 1v2. Instead of a 2v3, now it's a 2v4. Sage helps everything heal, heal, blah, 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 blah. Hey, these are not in order. At least right now, it's not left to right, best to worst. Some of you may say, Sova, probably S tier, right? Wrong. Now, don't hate me for this, but because it's based on his skill post playing relative to any other time or scenario in the game, he's really good at entering. He's really good at setting up his teammates. So, because even though he has everything can everything used to entry can be used to retake he's still up there b is about average he's a little bit better than average a still amazing everybody knows how annoying it is to play against lineup larry with all his shock darts and sova with his alt everybody knows but a good player can play around sova's alt if he's the last one alive if he's not and all his teammates actually wait it's pretty annoying so he's an A tier, can dark the bomb, can drone, blah 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 blah. He's freaking annoying to play against, that's the bottom line. Next up we have Vipper Vipper Vipper. Viper. Because most of her abilities either cut vision or do damage, or both, she's probably one of the most annoying to play against. And just like Brim, even if you don't have lineups from across the map or you don't have an orb lineup and then a mo molly lineup and then you peek and then you blah, blah blah she's still super annoying to play against but i think we can all this doesn't need much much discussion her alt scary to enter that green thing man and uh i don't know what else to say she's just up here man she's up there now reyna 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 her whole kit is made to enter site, and because of that, she's obviously not going to be that good in a post plant because you're not entering site, you're defending it. She's not a sentinel, she's, an, she's a duelist. But because of her flash and her dismiss, she can get a lot of info because people will shoot the flash, and that gives you, okay, there's one right there, there's one right there. Or if they're blinded, you save a little bit of time. Her alt is not that good in a post plant. It's better for a retake. But her um, her dismiss and her flash are fairly good. But compared to entering or any other type of, of playing, I'm gonna put her down here with Phoenix. Now, hate me all you want, but you gotta realize you got we're looking at this a certain way. If you didn't listen to the ground rules, you might be mad. But in a in a post plant scenario, relative to her out her kit and how you play her usually, I mean, it's simple. Next up, we have Jet. Now Jet, one of the top tier space creators in this game, one of the top tier angle peekers in this game, one of the best aggressive agents in this game. Because of that, you can see where I'm going. Hate me all you want. Like I said at the beginning, setting the ground rules, this isn't a time to jump spot, to jump peak with an op, 
dash away after you miss or kill. This is a time to play passively, hold angles, and do all that. Because Jet is such an aggressive agent, that's just not, post plan is not her thing. And you may say, oh, but I see Tarek, I see Wardell, I see Sam, I see all these streamers or, or pros or tens. Oh, but they play Jet and they peek and they kill and they, and they win the post plan. Yeah, well, they got a 4K because they're the best players in the game. They smurf in Radiant. I'm talking about the average Jet player, and not the average Jet player, the average player who plays Jet. We're not, we can't be looking at just the radiance here. These, Jet is not a good agent for post match. doesn't have anything to delay, doesn't have any flashes, doesn't have anything to to really like, like hurt the enemy. All she has to do is stuff to benefit herself, which in a post plant, especially with limited space and probably limited area to play with, and you can't really updraft anywhere because they're probably around the corner, she's not that good. Next up, Sky. I've, I've had a tough time deciding on Sky. And part of me saying, oh, put her in B. Part of me saying, put her in C. The reason for that is she's probably really, probably top two in entering site fighting Sova. Because of her dog, she can just clear every corner. <sighs> but because of how good she is at, at entering site, because you can just run in, you can ult, go cabbages, go. Find out where everybody is, sight's clear, you got it. Bada bing, bada boom. And you can flash, you can fake flash. You're really good at peeking alone. She's probably the best initiator for for uh, fighting solo. I just don't think in a post plan she's much better than, than she is entering site or in any other scenario. Because she has a heal, it's really good. But it's only limited range. It's not like Sage. You can't heal somebody from heaven when you're a short. You know. She's very limited in a, in a post plan. Now Yoru. Yoru. Um, he's, he's, he's a very unique agent. In his kit. It's not like any other agents. He has flashes. That's pretty normal. But his alt, his decoy, and his TP are all pretty unique. Because there's no other character who can put his TP and like it, it goes far away. Like only Chan or what? He 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 can only TP from like it's a stationary TP, so it, you can't go anywhere really that you haven't been already. It's a very defensive TP and Omen. It's you can only go so far. It has a radius of what like 10 meters. But Yoru, you can go goddamn from New York to LA. So because of that. And that means he's really good at entrying because you can you can just util spam, throw your TP back site, put a decoy, flashbang, flashbang, TP. They're they're like they're doing a Helen Keller simulator, you got a free kill on site. So, because of that, because he's so good at entrying. Sorry. He's in C tier as well. Now I wish he was D tier, so this could be an even even tier list, but it's not. So it isn't. Sorry. Next up, Astra. Astra, because simply, there's two abilities that make her better than average in a post plant. That's her suck and her concuss. When taking sight, even though there's multiple enemies on site, most likely like two or three, it's still hard to hit a concuss or a suck because you don't know exactly where they are. And the same, uh, using the same logic as I did when I rated Breach, Astra, you can suck off the bomb and you can stun the bomb so you can peek it. You can watch pro plays, like all they do if they have an Astra live in a post time is they goddamn run across the map and then put their stars in the bomb. You can also use her, um, obviously smokes are really good and her Wall is really good, but also Wall is good at, re at pushing site. Smokes are good at pushing site, but just because she has a suck and a concuss, I'm putting her in B tier. Next up, Ko. I also had. I feel like initiators are pretty hard to um, to rate here because they're obviously good at like pushing site, but that util can also be used in the same way to defend site when they're already on site. So you're off site and they tap on you use your sky dog you can push it in the same way that 
you can disable all their abilities and that can heavily help a um a retake like if there's a ko if there's a killjoy with her ult and you know she's ct and you know she's bad ult you can just knife the wall or you can pop your ult as ko i'm gonna have to put him honestly probably d tier or c tier or sorry b or c tier i can't really decide because his abilities his ult everything it's so good at just pushing sight i honestly don't know i'm probably gonna have to put him b i have here written in my notes to put him somewhere on c but i honestly think b because how good he is at like if you're playing passive and i, I the ground rules we set they're playing correctly in a post plant ko can be so helpful because they can't use any abilities if you have your knife for eight seconds it's a long time that's that's like a fifth of the bomb right it's 40 seconds so honestly ko pretty good b tier and with the new patch, I know we're not rating this on a new patch, but he's going to be even better because you won't need direct line of sight, but it will be a smaller radius, but now lineups can be used for inside, like inside tube on B, or like fracture, you can just throw a molly like at sight, like on the opposite side of default, where it's planted behind spammable on bottom A site, fracture. Yeah, he's going to be pretty good. Next up, Killjoy. Pretty easy. Do you have any talk about this? Unfortunately, I will. Fentanyls. Classic defense site, guys. Or girls. Um, I mean, in a retake. Killjoy mollies. Lineup larries. You can shoot them. You can shock dart the bomb. You can just shoot the bomb. But if they know how to do a lineup. Or if they have them in some weird spot you can't see. Or it's behind something then it's pretty annoying to play against. Um, her ult literally stops a push if you don't have any to stop it. Turret, info, damage, annoyance. What's her other ability? And her alarm bot. I, just, I think that's all I'll have to say. Like she, You can just play Killjoy and go home. Just leave your, leave your desktop, go in bed. The enemy still probably lose their retake. Killjoy does a lot of things for you. Her turret shoots for you. Not only does it do damage, it slows them down and it tells you where they are. And that's why you see a lot of new players or lower ranks playing Killjoy because it's quite simply one of the easiest agents to be effective on because you don't need to shoot anybody. You can be on a thousand ping, all you gotta do is click your use button on your on your molly and, and bombs can't be defused. Chamber. Chamber. He's so broken. His ult is literally like insane. They took, in the update where they took away one trip, they literally took away the only thing that made him a sentinel. If he didn't have his trip, everybody's saying he's a duelist. That's my opinion. But because of how good he is, his TP, you can, if you look up cat and you have a TP in A main on a scent, I'm thinking about a scent. You can just TP like, you can be in A main, you know, shoot a few Vandal shots, TP to, to Cat. Now like, you can just go anywhere on the map, if you've been there before. His ult, insanely good. Deagle, insanely good. But, in a post plant, I'm really stuck. I'm stuck between A and B tier here, for Chamber. He's so broken that he's annoying to play against in a post plant as much as he is anywhere, any other time on the map. Just for because of how broken he is, I'm gonna put in B. Just cause it's not any more annoying to play against like a chamber in a, in a post plant. Actually, yes it is. Cause he can be holding a super off angle and just TP out. But he can do that any other time of the, of the, of the, of the round. But then again, he can hold it and TP away, which wastes more time, which is now it's harder to defuse the spike. Yeah, and I'll put him in A, just cause in a scenario where he is supposed to get out and waste time, a post plant is that scenario. Next up, Neon. Um, just cause she's the most aggressive agent in the game, can run and gun like Call of Duty, slide, wall, stun. I'm gonna have to put her in D tier just with Jet, just because there's such aggressive agents that 
you know, you don't need to push towards the bomb in a retake. You can just sit back. And unfortunately, Neon's not good at that. Well, she is, because every agent's good at standing still. But, if you think about her abilities, she's kind of, she's meant to run in, stun, stun, wall, alt, go around, finger people. Now you got Cypher free, because your goddamn silver buddy can't hit the Neon sliding on the floor. Like she's looking for, for the goddamn bottle cap that slid under the fridge. Next up, Raze. Raze, I think, is the only duelist that's better than she is. She's better on a, on a, a post plant than she is entering site. And that's because her nade, boombot, and ult are all concentrated damaging abilities that go into one spot. And that spot is the spike. So she's very good at denying spike diffusal. And when she's entering site, yeah, you can nade over there, you can boom bot there for info, you can raise ult there, but there's no guarantee that those will do any damage or get any kills. I mean, that's why we see so many Rose ults on people entering site. Because it's so hard to, like, they can just run away. What if you got a chamber there, he just TP's out. You got a Yoru, bye bye. You got a jet updraft, and they just goddamn glide. Now you're sitting here with your freaking rocket like this, you're looking at the, ray, the jet, you're like, uh, can I even hit you? I don't know, probably not. Next thing you know, your chat spamming Rose ult. So, because of that, Rosa, raise ult, raise, in B tier. She's actually pretty good in a post plant. All you hear is, here comes the party! And next thing you know, uh, kick doubles in your chat. And the last but not least, we got Fade. Fade, another initiator. <sighs> Rosova Dart. It's better when taking sight. Because the fade eye, when taking sight, if they shoot it, you know where they are. If they don't shoot it, you know where they are. But on a retake, you already know they're pushing your sight. You already know they're they're coming for you. And so it's not as effective as it is when pushing sight. Because let's say you're sitting A short on bind, you know they're probably you hauling, you know they're probably coming through default from like the in-between triple and truck. So you know where they are. Like your fade eye doesn't do anything. Extraordinary. It obviously helps, and you can throw it and see if they're on the bomb, but like it's not as good as, as when you're taking sight. Her dogs. Amazing for checking like sewer on Haven on A. It's amazing for checking left and right. You can just freaking slide your mouse left and right. You know you can check that without risking a shorty kill. So all her abilities are just slightly less good. In in a post plant, her tether is probably the best, like the most adjusted for a post plant than all her other abilities. It's probably the one that's best relative to normally because once again, stuff that is concentrated on a single area is the best in a post plant because you know where they are, you know where the spike is, you know where their objective is. And so that is her best ability relative to normally. Now her alt, is very good. I'd say her ult is better when retaking than post plant. Also better than at taking sight. So really, all of her abilities are worse at post plant than they are retake. So for that reason, put her down in D. Now, these are not in order from left to right, best to worst, in the tiers. But I feel like there's a a few um. Recurring, reoccurring themes in this tier list. One being that Sentinels are towards the top and Duelists are towards the bottom. Now I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory, that's pretty normal because Duelists are meant to entry, Sentinels are meant to defend. We are talking about a scenario where you are defending as an agent. Now, Initiators and Controllers, they're pretty spread out. You have uh, one Initiator in A, Two in B and two in C. You have one controller in A, one in S, and two in B. So clearly, controllers are well. Based on this tier list, controllers are. You can say they're better, on average, than initiators on defending. And I feel like most people would say that's true. Let me know what you think of this tier list. Let me know what you would change. I may have forgotten some things. I may have overlooked some abilities or how you could use them. 
but I tried to keep it as fair as possible. The tier list link is in the description. You can make your own, send it to me, let me know in my Discord, or you can link it in the comments and I'll let you know what I think about it. Subscribe, follow my Twitch, follow my socials down in the description. Peace.